Online Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey there, Sleepy Hollow fans. Welcome back to AfterBuzz TV for the Sleepy Hollow After Show. I'm your host, Zach Wilson. You can tweet me throughout the week, throughout the show, at that Zach Wilson. And I'm here to talk to you about Sleepy Hollow with my fantastic panel, Jackie Borowski. Hi, one, two, three, Jackie B. And, and Stephen Lemieux. Lemieux. Hey guys, I'm Stephen Lemieux here. Follow me on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux, S T P H N L E M I U X. So we're getting ready to go into the wild for Sleepy Hollow, which is the title of this episode. And the reason that I said those yes. words. Into the uh, wild. Yes. Did but you not guys notice? with Emil Hirsch. Okay. Emil Hirsch is not here. No, oh. he is not here. Damn. Did you notice that, um, okay, I felt so behind when I noticed this this week, but when Abby's talking to the symbol, she holds up her hands like the symbol. Did, oh, yeah. Did you notice yeah. that? I, I can't believe this is the first time I noticed that because they did so many flashbacks of her in the um, garage talk, like saying, telling the symbol it saved her. And I was like, Ah, she's holding her hands like the symbol. It was, it was pretty <laughs> symbolic. The symbol, Can't which believe I, missed that. I guess is not evil now. Uh, duh, we all knew it wasn't evil. Yeah. And by um, we, I mean me. I kind of called it, too. Yeah, you called it, too. Yeah, and we, yeah we, dis we discussed it last week. Um, it seemed improbable. A lot of the fans pointed out that, I guess, um, because I was having this problem where I was like, maybe Ichabod knows something about it, and that's why he thinks it's evil, but... I was, like, doubtful. I guess he just, what a lot of the fans said was he just assumed it was evil because it was in, because it was in that guy. Yeah, that was place. his only evidence yeah. that it was evil. Come on, Ichabod, you're smarter than that. Hey. That's like me finding a crayon in, like, Donald Trump's house and being like, this is now an evil crayon. Hey, I found a $2 bill once. I didn't know what it was, so evil. <laughs> evil. Can oh I, my, most things are evil. I think my I my know. one qualm with the evil symbol that wasn't evil was the fact that, all right, I can get copper being magnetic and like having ionic bonds that are you it's know bronze. You, you, I thought they said it was bronze. Oh, it was, it was, it was, it was bronze, yeah, bronze before the bronze age. Bronze. But like, yeah, you if there you can cut things that are so perfectly cut that the atoms reconnect, right? So it makes sense. Like, okay, it's magnetic. It does that. You can't really connect uneven clay break it apart and put it back together like with the tablet yeah My i was so is, confused but, but we're in a magic world i'm willing to grant to them a little leeway on the science of that because magic okay even that even magic even that yes. aside though we had a whole bones crossover that like involved the tablet and i'm like how did they not no one realized this we had some of what is oh, arguably yeah. about some of the smartest people, like all in the same room, and nobody recognized this. Maybe they just didn't even bring it up. Like this doctor in this episode who's looking at this bronze thing, he's like, well, because it's two pieces of a half. Like, apparently, it's just so obliterately obvious that it's two pieces that maybe, the, maybe <laughs> yeah, in bones, true. they were just like, oh, I guess they probably already know what, what's in the middle yeah, between these things. I'll accept that. I'll accept that. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm excited for where this storyline could go, um, because I'm, I'm intrigued at least. I don't know what's hap what's going to happen next. Uh, I mean, I'm intrigued in the sense that I, I did feel like the tablet was, even though I hadn't mentioned it, the tablet was an abandoned plot line. We completely forgot about it, and it seems to, at one point to be very important. So it makes sense that now we have these uh, amulets, I shall call them, these amulets that connect to the tablets in a way and there's two of everything which obviously means two witnesses and when Ichabod touched it it connected him to Abby so we know this has some sort of greater tie-in in in the larger plot is it the symbol for witnesses probably is yeah I was about to say I think we can call probably them witness is. medallions yes 
Um, Dude, do you want to trade witness all medallions? All I did was become a witness, and all I got was the shitty medallion. It's like pogs. <laughs> They're like pogs for witnesses. No, don't refer to pogs they ever. Would, they would ever. be slammer. Pogs. I got a, I got a, I got a witness slammer. No. <laughs> it can also no. be used as a can opener, perhaps a bottle opener as well, and maybe it even prying yeah. things that are of less dense material than bronze. So what? it doesn't bend. You don't want to bend it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't bend it. <laughs> That's very. You can use it that way. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Um, but you never know what we, opening a bottle with a magical item. You might like make it into magic beer, and all of a sudden you grow. are in Universal Studios Harry Potter Land. Um, question though. So if this is a good symbol, what was it doing on a gigantic temple in the Purgatory place? Unless it's the symbol of the witnesses who trapped the hidden one there a long time ago. I feel like that it's either that or it's the symbol because in that temple they they referred to the um the brother of the hidden one living above the temple and the hidden one like lived in the catacombs below. He lived he had the basement so, apartment. Yeah, he had the he had the, the, the converted he got basement. The shitty converted he, it basement did apartment. seem like he was pretty nearby. Yeah. to the to the the lighted one, the revealed yeah. one. What are we calling him? I forgot his name already. I, I'm, but I, uh, I assume that that symbol is either the symbol of the brother who used to be like the the main god yeah. guy, or it's like a symbol of their family in general. And so maybe this is a symbol of like the fight between the hidden one and his brother. Maybe. Um, so would the so that would imply that the witnesses. Are all basically agents of this god of light. Yeah, um, I could see that. Uh, it would it would make sense. It would it would expand the witness mythology in a cool way, where it makes them part of something much bigger. It takes hints from Buffy in a way of that there's like a legacy yes. here, and and not just like there are these two witnesses and right. they're the first ones ever which is a little if your if your stories go back as far as these do with this, now that we're getting into gods and ancient and I would all like of that everything I, I like that idea too that you have I mean I, I hope this is the idea that you know there are witnesses throughout time because then maybe that means Grace Dixon was a witness maybe that means well I think that it would be similar to uh, the reason I used Buffy is that there was one at a time right yeah Yeah. for the most part Um, but I like this idea that you can have like past witnesses that could come forward I think we actually brought this up at one point in one of the episodes where we were like, wouldn't it be cool if, like, this other witness from uh, this other person my, was What if it was, like, from... Jesus and Mary were oh witnesses? My. Jesus and... Mary's his mother. Come on. Mary How... Magdalene, oh. the whole oh, Mary Magdalene. Yeah, that's yeah. the one I meant. Not Mother Mary. Okay, I, I, I think I brought this up a little the bit where I think are. Ichabod's not the witness from this time. I think that's that's the thing that I wanted to think about. Is like, why would Ichabod be born a witness 200 years before the other one is? Unless it was like destiny to send him in time. But I think it was more accurate to say Betsy Ross was the other witness and she dies. That and I the think reason they have to send Ichabod forward is because it's easier to send him forward than hope that America can find the second but, witness. But Betsy Ross didn't die. What do you no, mean? But she oh, did. Yeah. Like, but not like then. We have history, but don't you think it's too? I mean, don't you think it's a little too convenient that the only other person that we know of that has been in the Hidden Ones uh, prison is Betsy, Betsy Ross, Ross, who was a spy with Washington, just like Ichabod was, who seemingly was the only other person aside from the main people like Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and Washington that knew of all this supernatural stuff that was being sent out on missions with full knowledge of the supernatural stuff that Franklin was actually teaching just like he was teaching Ichabod. I mean, I feel like it's obvious that him and Betsy Ross were witnesses of that time. So the, my question is, does Ichabod not having officially died from the past mean that there's no male witness in the present? Or are we going to meet a male witness in the present? What if Reynolds is the male witness from the present? Because we do know that there's some sort of... Um, he's up to something. He's, he's admitted to Abby that he, didn't, he wasn't the one who wanted to keep her in the FBI. He, in this episode, he basically said oh, that wasn't really my decision because he revealed that he was still bitter about their breakup. So what if there's like a higher power or something that told Reynolds like because you two have some sort of destiny or they just chose to like keep, tell him he has to keep Abby on? 
because they're destined to be together. That would be interesting. I don't know that that doesn't. Reynolds doesn't strike me as a witness. Yeah. But I, I I'm intrigued by the idea of another witness in this time. So you're basically like Ichabod's a carryover. Um, I mean, it would certainly it would upend like what we built the show around. That's, I think that's... Holly's the other witness. Oh, no. No. no, no, I've no. seen some no. stuff. Uh-uh. Um, oh, Eric Olin in the chat. What if Joe? Yeah, is Joe. Yeah. Witness. Um, that could be really interesting. And that could be the only reason he could beat the Wendigo. Yeah, he is. Yeah. he seems to be like beating it of his own volition right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, not in a, not in that way, Steve. <laughs> Uh, and we'll, we'll get into Joe and Jenny and uh, their fun auction day. Yeah. Uh, their date out uh, for the auction. But uh, but let's keep talking. I want to keep talking about this because I'm, I'm very intrigued by this idea of, of multiple witnesses. Because yes. it, it, the reason I say Betsy Ross didn't die is like, in, according to history books at least, Betsy Ross lived beyond the Revolutionary War. Right. She lived at least uh, until she could knit the flag. Um, now that could all be lies. Uh, they could the show could write that off as we had to keep her secret. So we said that she was alive and knitting flags, even though she was a badass spy warrior. Uh, Why are you doing the trailer voice for that? We had to keep her secret. I keep her safe. Isn't it? Um, isn't it possible? I mean, a lot of people said that the head on uh, Franklin Stein's bride looked similar to Betsy Ross. Couldn't it hypothetically? No, that, the timeline doesn't add up. The timeline doesn't add up. No, because that body was already buried. Oh, and, and she we was... know that Betsy Ross was alive at the time. Because yeah, didn't she help Betsy to put Ross it helped, in... but yeah. yeah. Well, she helped with the string for Franklin Stein. I don't know about the bride. No, the other one. Betsy Ross and Ichabod literally, literally loaded, loaded that, that body, that body oh. into the tomb. But let me let me say something else though. The reason Ichabod ended up in the position he's in is from fighting the headless horseman. Doesn't that mean that hypothetically the headless horseman could have already killed Betsy Ross? Maybe. So hmm. this could give us a storyline that brings back headless. I know the showrunner said he won't, but perhaps in the past. So mad. We want headless. <laughs> so back. mad. We want headless back. I don't know. I just I just think that it would make sense if she was a witness if their one way to save Ichabod was to freeze him because they couldn't have both witnesses die, and if they had. Like enough if both, time. If both witnesses die, it like Moloch would have won, but keeping one alive stalled in some way. Some, well, we were dealing with the headless horsemen in the present after they froze them both because it was it was their hearts were tied together. Remember, their lives were tied together. Yeah. So I mean, I just think that it's a little too convenient that they knew exactly that the headless horseman was coming for Ichabod that they could perhaps know that he was coming by him killing the other witness. I mean. I don't know, but I'm trying to find where Betsy Ross's character makes sense in all this because she she's just in too many different places that are. Well, that's the thing. I think that's why I think you're on to something is that they, they're stringing to... something about yeah. Betsy Ross through here by putting her sword in the underworld, other dimension. Well, the um, thing is, I, I mean, she's in the main credits, but she hasn't been in very many episodes. So you have to feel like, like. They have some sort of big finale construction for we have, her. We have four episodes sort. left. I She's think... Ichabod's son. Done. God damn it. Um, I, we have four episodes left. Um, I think just bec- bec- her being in the main credits implies that she has to be in at least three of those. Just because like you don't put somebody uh, in the title credits if they're not a regular right. who's going to appear in most, if not all, of the episodes. Yeah. So... I think we're gonna see plenty of her to come. There's a reason her sword was in the underworld. There's, right. They're not. They didn't just like leave that there and like the, we're gonna pretend it never happened. Right. So I, there's definitely something up with Betsy Ross. It's hard to say exactly what. Um, I think we'll just have to wait and see. In where, the, where in the it two episodes we've seen to. her, she's still done more than Katrina did. No, well, Katrina were... messed up plenty. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, so why don't we talk? Do you guys want to talk about the uh, the monster of the week? That was a really cool monster. I was all about that monster. It was character really design cool. again with this show. Yeah. Character design is on point. I mean, I love that he had this like regenerating arm, and that was done so well. Where it's like Abby lobs off the arm, and then it's just like 
And it goes all the way back. On. Worms. It was like he was like the uh, the boogeyman from yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> and I also have to say, from a girl power perspective, I I love the fact that it's these these two girls backing each other up in this in this fight scene. We have um, we have kind of like a, we have a great female friendship blossoming between um, Agent Freckles and Abby. The first Linda. Yeah. It was Deborah called the first Linda. The monster. Was, I, oh, the monster. Yeah, yeah. It was, like, a, it was a cool villain design. And I like I liked the idea that like the monster it was almost to me it did remind me of the strain where it's like the monster's worms like infect the other It's person. a tentacle monster. We know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. No. Like, oh no. But it it did remind me a little bit of the strain where it's like that monster infects the other person and um I guess like I the idea they turn into another one. Lob it off at the yeah, I thought, everyone's saying it. The, the, everyone's saying this was a creepy monster. Yeah. I didn't even think the monster was that creepy. I thought, I mean, the concept of it, it, like looking at it walking around and stuff was very Power Rangers monster kind of to me. Until like when it's misty out and you have like the blur on its face, then it looked really cool to me. I thought when the cop turned into one, though, that was what was really well done because it reminded me of the thing. Mixed with Game of Thrones kind of style, with his eyes like oh ice. yeah, it was definitely like a White Walker. Yeah, kind like of that thing. was super yeah. cool. I was like, okay, now this is scary because he's like still human, but he's got like pure. It's like bloodshot but blue, and they it did a really good job. Yeah, it was super creepy. And, and then he's I got like, like worms. I mean, I do like the fact that they've they put our our heroines in this in this cabin where they're stuck with this guy, and they're just realizing, oh my gosh, this guy has he's got the virus. Oh no! Oh, and no. then he gets up and he's gonna attack you with his worms. He's, he's got worms. worms. He's got the worms. He's gonna start scooting. Put that put that collar back on. That prevents worms. <laughs> like the dog. <laughs> what if that was how they solved Eat this it pill. Solve it? Eat this pill. And it's like a. They had to rub worm. the like ointment also, on the Abby back of his Ichabod neck. Also, Abby and Ichabod know a lot about like plants and making things. Yes, they also know how to find, or the people around them always know how to find a convenient book. I thought, yeah, I thought that book was a little too convenient because they're in this cabin, and first off, they find a magically like decently stocked cabin in the woods. If a cat, if a cabin was abandoned in the woods, I don't think it would end up looking like. They that. found Walter yeah. White's cabin. Oh, God. Oh, good thing we got enough insure here to stay here for a while. Oh, no. Better crossover than Bone. Uh, hey. Yeah. I think. Um, and then they found the convenient. Storybook to tell them everything. Yeah, it was, I, th- that that uh, like that frustrated me. It's like so you could, didn't have a way for them to figure it out on their own, and so you, you just there's a book that there just right. happens to be in this cabin that looks like fairly modern again and well kept. If it's old enough of a cabin that it has this like 400 year old book, it shouldn't be that well maintained. Right. Plus, like, with modern tables and everything. I don't know. And I guess you could write it away being like, oh, this is the ancestor of the Dutch people. Well, it's like, well, where did that ancestor go, and why did they leave this cabin? It would have been... Desc- you it, mean descendant. Descendant. I'm it would have been cooler descendant. if they went down into the well, and there was, like, a room down there. Yeah. Because like, then it's like, the people, the people that were affected, they threw down there to still live until they turned into one. Or yeah. I would have even liked, like, Let's say you have somebody who is the protector of the well, like an like an ancestor who um, an ancestor. I mean, a descendant who is a protector of of the secret of the well. So you could even have that cabin in the woods with the person in it who is like, oh, my great 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 grandpappy, this happened to, and I can explain it to you. Yeah, and, help and you then out. At, he they could work with Abby yeah. and Sophie, and then that guy winds up getting killed, right. which just builds onto Abby's storyline of a uh, fear of bringing anybody into this yes. circle. Because I thought that was very poignant when, when she's like, I don't want to, and it was a good reason why she's not telling Reynolds. Because honestly, like, at a at certain point... At this point, point like, yeah, you feel like... At this point, when you have them stuck in the woods together and you have this guy dying from some sort of, like, supernatural beast, you're like, I, she might want to tell him at this point. Yeah, I think like, it's time to bring him into, yeah. this, into the, the Scooby gang. But I, even though there's no logistical reason to keep him out, there I do... I will buy an emotional reason to keep him out because emotion doesn't have to be logical. I just... I just think they passed up on a really great opportunity to do the, like the Skinwalker storyline again, something where this thing could morph into one of them, and like yeah, that's so tr- that's so played out though. I don't know. 
<laughs> like the whole like <laughs> shut me like, down. just suck me down. It just makes me it just makes me think of like um, there's a great uh, this is a random reference but Rick and Morty had a thing where because there's multiple Ricks running around oh. and one of them is like I'm putting an X on my forehead so that if there's any scenario in which there are two of me, you'll know that I'm the one with the X. Like, it's just like, simply, yes, we, we understand that that complication. And it can be used well, but I feel like Sleepy's done that, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, well, at least we get Sophia and Abby teaming up with Spears. I <laughs> like them as a team. I like, I mean, I like... I like their interaction. I like that their relationship that's growing. And I do think um, someone before we came in here just tweeted me saying um, there's got to be something up with the fact that her parents mysteriously disappeared. Like, I feel that that has to be resolved or, like, brought up in some sort of significant way into the main plot line. Well, do you because think her- she's mentioned it several times now, and you're like, okay, I feel like this is, this is a big hint. Like, her parents have mysteriously disappeared. I understand that her parents mysteriously disappeared, but you also have to understand that they've written her dad back in the, into the show and then just never mentioned it again for three episodes, so he's kind of disappeared again. Well, I feel like maybe part of... Okay, this is me hoping that part of these like loose ends that they're sticking out, I'm hoping it's not going to be like last season where it's like, okay, what? what? I hope it's more like these loose ends that we're sticking out here we're going to try and, like, tie them in into some sort of epic finale. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that... Like, somebody mentioned to me, oh, they were like, what if Abby's dad is actually the main, the main, the Hidden One's brother, the main god? Like, what if, what if that's it? Abby's dad? Abby's dad. That would be nuts. Yeah, wouldn't that be crazy? Um, that would be interesting. Um, now I'm processing that. Um... That would be a stretch just because, like, they've sort of humanized him in the last time we met him and made him very, like, real. Mm -hmm. So to now add this, like, supernatural force to him, unless he, like, isn't aware of it. Yeah. Would feel like came... It would feel like just, like, coming out of nowhere as opposed to, like, a carefully laid trap. I would say that there might be something to it with Sophie's parents, though. I feel, yeah, I feel like Sophie's parents, something, they have to tie in some way. I have this random thought that, like, maybe Sophie's parents were the hidden one in Pandora. And then I was like, eh, that's a little, because he said he's been gone for, like, for eons before he was raised back up. And then... She hadn't been to Sleepy Hollow in thousands of years. Yeah, and then they've kind of had so many brush-ins with them that I feel like she would have seen her parents. Can I just say to the people in the chat that are saying, oh, Ichabod and Abby could be her parents. Like, stop. This isn't Doctor Who, okay? <laughs> You're not meeting somebody's daughter that they're married to seasons before you find out who they are. Like, this is not that. <laughs> stop. I know where you There's are not in your enough. Yeah. Now. I think there is time travel here, but I think the time travel math of time, if there is some sort of math of time travel, hey, Marty, um, and or the last time we did time travel in this show, travel. the fans didn't like but, it. Well, but I feel like with there has to be some sort of logic. You have to create some sort of logic to time travel, and that would like defy all of the logic of time travel. Tell us about the logic of time travel. No, I just feel like you have Ichabod, who's from a different era. Abby's clearly from this era, and you, Agent Freckles is clearly from this era. So it's like, yeah. why would you... Why muddle it with somebody from... The... Like the future. Well, no, why? I mean, yeah, how could she be from the future when she's clearly established that, like, that all the supernatural stuff is something she's just learning about? If you were a time traveler, that would be old hat to you. Wouldn't yeah. it be interesting if Sophia is perhaps Abby's half sister? That would be interesting. That yeah, would be interesting. That would be a, that would be an interesting twist. Because if her father went away to have another family or something and just abandon them then he could have another life which could include do you include... think this could be some sort of plot line where it's like she eventually like shows that she's tr- like she's actually like their adversary and she's secretly trying to like kill them all no oh, okay <laughs> just saying happened with Henry Zach Steven shut me says down. Zach no. shut me down I'm gonna shut you down happened with Jeremy <laughs> just saying oh, yeah, Jeremy remember him yeah, yeah uh, remember remember how he was good and then he turned out to be bad just saying that happens. Remember how we had a really great actor that played them and then we got rid of him? <laughs> and then we let him sit around for a bunch of episodes just like we're doing with the hidden one? Yeah, I remember, remember that. Remember that character, Holly, that was really awesome that no. re- everybody really liked no. and wanted to bring back? Nobody liked I must be character. thinking of someone else. 
Do you remember um, Orlando Jones? So. Oh, don't eat. That breaks my heart. Fran Jenicky <laughs> Marlving. Oh, oh Fran um, So, what do you guys think of uh, the way that this sort of wraps up in terms of Abby and Reynolds? Are they pushing the two of them together? I, th- I think the- I think what they're trying to do because at this point, when they've aired out all their feelings, and it seems like. It seems like we had what was that one line that sometimes the things we think will hurt us yeah may will actually, actually save help us. us. I, so. Yeah, I feel like I feel like they're doing this thing where they're trying to set Abby up with Reynolds, and then at the last minute they're going to have um, Ichabod be like upset and an outsider about that. And it's another way that they're trying to frustrate the fans before they eventually bring the Ikabi pairing. Because it's clear that's what they're setting up. Like Yeah, I mean even I have to admit they're like they're clearly threading that through. Right. Like I don't think they're doing a good necessarily a great job at like set at like getting them to really like have that romantic dynamic. But I feel like I this do, is I can't an see obvious, that they're doing it. I feel like this too is like an obvious diversion from that because we've had so many little like Ichabod trying to do date nights and things like that where at this point you're like you're just literally throwing Reynolds in there to then yank him back out of the game it seems like this is too little too late like if you wanted to actually have established a relationship with them and then have Ichabod be doing the little dates because he's like oh my gosh like I'm gonna lose Abby that would have made more sense as a plot line Poor old Reynolds. Yeah, he's the literally... Writers are just going to break his little heart. Yeah, they're just literally using his, him as like a plot point chess piece, which is irritating to But me. I like Lance Gross as an actor, so I think that they're going to keep him around, which means... I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. Do you think the cliffhanger for this season will be, oh, they defeat the hidden one, but then it turns out that Reynolds is the hidden one? No. No, like oh, that would be too similar to Frank. I feel like it? I feel like the cliffhanger yeah. will will somehow reveal that Reynolds actually knows everything. I feel that's going to be what the cliffhanger. Yes, I is. think I think him. I, I would love to the, the twist because to we be know his boss guy. Well, we know his boss guy, the guy, or not his boss, but whoever was that guy. Information to at one point. Yes, we know that guy knows everything because he was he was the one who like got the information from Nevins and then shot him. So, so I, I, part of me is just like, he's got to know everything and he's just playing that he doesn't. I think that Joe's going to become a big adversary at the end of the season. As, as a Wendigo? As a dark creature that Pandora's powers can control. Yeah. I can see they that. They really foreshadowed well, that this episode. Yeah, I well, can let's see that talk happening. about Joe and, because uh, he, like, he hurt her. Like, so they go through the whole thing with the fancy iPhone auction. Right. I understand that we've established that Joe has come into a lot of money, but he has a million dollars to just throw into this auction? No, he has a million dollars in coffin cash, which, as we all know, when translated into bitcoins, equals, like, several million dollars. I, I know there was a lot of money in the coffin cash, and I know that we've established that, like, his dad left him a sizable... Um, Coffin cash a, settlement. A, a, yeah, some sort of It's a different settlement. kind of coffin cash. Yes. Yeah. Get down but to then it. I was like, I was like cash. really? He can just throw around a million dollars? He was like, yeah, boop, 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 million dollars, what's up? I was like, uh, that's you, a lot of money. If you that's plant your father in the ground, you end up with cash in your bank account. Oh, God. oh my God, it's um, Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, like, because, again, like, last week was the first week I even knew that he had this kind of money. Right. Like, I had no idea. I mean, I guess, and like, looking back, they did reference that his dad had come into some money and there might be some sort of inheritance. But you think, yeah, maybe you left him, like, $30,000 or something. But to come so you know? clean, like, big into, like, two episodes in a row, you'd think it had just been, like, this thing we knew the whole time. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to look at it as well in that, like... The guy they meet, I forget his name, they introduce the character who's all suave and stuff at the auction with him. Oh, yeah, I have his name in here. Um, Hold, please. Hans 
Christinger. Hello, my name is Hans, Hans Christinger. I could perhaps be a Hessian. It'd be great for them to reintroduce yeah. some Hessians to this freaking he could show. Totally you mean be a the Hessian. bad guys from the beginning of the show? Yeah, you know that, that were, were really were... cool. That provided us some context that other people in the world actually know that there's supernatural stuff going on. Because that, that threaded, would make sense. The threaded villainy from the time of the Revolutionary War, aka the time of one half of our main duo, into the t current time, the other half of our duo. It would be really insane for them to bring them back, you know? But Hans Christensen, perhaps a Hessian. Um, I really want him to be a Hessian. Yeah, I, I really... Mean, yeah, we, we know we, he's, he's not... He's a Hessian. We know when... Pan, because at first I thought he was like some sort of minion that Pandora sent in to bid for the box. Mm -hmm. And then we realized that he didn't recognize her and she was clearly trying to get rid of him. So Okay, force choking. Yeah! <laughs> I was like, she's Darth Vader. I mean, anyway. I'm down. Like, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, that's that cool. is cool. Like, I want to see Pandora on a rampage just like throwing mother... <laughs> it's like Hans Christensen's like, my people, we already have a deal. The deal has been Hans altered. Pray I do not he alter it further. didn't write The Little Mermaid. It's Hans Christopher. Hans Christopher, okay. Or I have, Christinger. I have yeah, changed the deal. The Hans Christopher to, uh, it's actually Christinger, I wrote. Stop interrupting my Star I'm Wars sorry. reference. All right, Steven, I'm Star sorry. Wars joke, go. I have altered the deal. Pray I do not alter it further. <laughs> Well done. Well done, sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, where was I going before but I went I really off on a Hessian? But I really want to be a Hessian because we know that he's not really... It would also make sense because, well, honestly, yeah. like, if, if you think about it, what other groups or, or bad guys do right. we have out there? Because there was, um, like, we had the one bad... Uh, the one guy above Reynolds. Right. Um, and that's it. Yeah. So, like, and we don't know who he works for. Right. So either they're leading us to a new secret organization of some kind that they're going to introduce. A whole new world, or, per se? No, just one organization. Oh. Um, or they're going to use the one secret organization that they already have in their arsenal. So why not Why not use it? Um, since they, It's not like they folded them. It's not like they murdered all the Hessians in season one. That's Hessians. True. Hessians? Right? Hessians, not Hessians. Sure. Hold, hold for plane. I just realized that I think it's Hans Christian Andersen is the name of the guy who wrote The Little Mermaid. Yeah. And not Hans Christian um, there's, there's too many But Hans what I was saying, he around. referenced that Joe was getting into the business that his father was in. So obviously he had met uh, Mr. Corbin, Corbin Sr. Yeah. So I would assume that Corbin Sr. had sell, sold a lot of artifacts at auctions like these. And they're going for top yeah. dollar. So I wouldn't, as, I wouldn't be surprised that Joe has a lot of money in his inheritance if... Corbin had went to these auctions, knew Hans Christopher, and had done many bidding wars and selling wars with them. The only thing that I'm, like, thrown off by this is that, like, when we first met August Corbin, he was, like, a small-town cop who yeah. was, like, investigating conspiracies, and he had all these theories, and the August Corbin that exists now is this crazy... Iraq war vet, treasure hunter, like who's he was, traveled he the was globe, just lying low. He bidding was just on lying different low. auctions, and then spent 20 years in sleepy hollow New York raising basically three children, like hey, two Zach? of whom are not his own. Zach, do you like do you like Steven Spielberg films? Do you just answer me yes or no? Do you? Yes. Okay. What was Indiana Jones's day job? He was a professor. He was a professor, okay? Because he studied things. Nobody would expect that Indiana Jones has done True. four movies worth of stuff, but True. we have four movies worth of stuff. I'm totally, right. I'm totally no one not considering. No one would expect a professor You know to what? Do that. Point rescinded. There you go. I Can we also talk that. about the invite list? I paused it because it looked really amazing. There was Miss Scarlet, <laughs> M. Knight, and no. F, yeah, <laughs> SFB, whoever that is. Um, there were a couple. There was one Some name. Some Greg Gordino B? was listed twice. Well, just duh. saying. Maybe twice the was, credit. And there was, oh, like the full name. Yeah, it was listed twice. Maybe like, it was like his guest. Him, him. Or it's like two guys with the same name. They have a different. It's like different guys. It's like you again. Like I know. I know. We run, uh, we run Hans into each other. Hans was not on the list. We run into each other at every <laughs> auction like this. We're different people. I swear. I know. There's so many Greg Gordonos in the world. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Wait, then, which one of you actually won the auction? Oh, it was that Greg. It was that Greg, not the other Greg. Okay. <laughs> and then we have a Gorbachev there too. Daniel Gorbachev. Tear down this wall. <laughs> I just like M. Night because I'm imagining like Shyamalan's yep. in the back. Like, I... twist! Million and one. 
<laughs> They're all ghosts. It would, a room full it, of ghosts. it would only work once, but he'd try it every single time. <laughs> And have many failures, thus oh after. I also God. like Miss Scarlet because I, I assume that it's either a reference to Gone with the Wind or a reference to the game of Clue. Yeah, I first thought Clue. Yeah. I would have um, liked to see, like, Boo 69 Bs on the screen. Hell <laughs> yes. yeah. Um, but so, okay, so Joe, when as soon as he touches it, starts turning into a Wendigo because he's a monster. Makes hey, he sense. knows when to go. Makes sense. His eyes turn white. He gets all cloudy. Um, I like that again. Well, we haven't just dropped this this plot line that he was in. Um, and then he scratches Pandora. What do you guys Rawr. think? She was freaked that he hurt her. Mm-hmm. She's used to having a lot of powers, so maybe. So I guess it could be as simple as just like she's not used to getting hurt. That's like that. how I read it. I read it as she she's realized that her power has. Come, because I mean, she talks about her power in this scene, so I feel like she, this is a point where she realizes that her power has gotten to such a low point that she can be wounded by by a demon, and that frightens her. What was I, I'm trying to find? Yeah. Oh, my power is my own, and no one will take it from me ever again. So th- that's something that she said at the top of the scene. So I just read that as the natural like cause and effect. Yeah, of, and again, I. I'm really I'm ready for we her clear, to just turn yeah. on the hidden one. Like they've been thre- they've, they've been slowly this up. slowly building. Yeah. She's more and more frustrated. Like she thinks in this in this episode that he's like about to give her her powers back, and then he holds her and he's like, "I will never trust you again." Yeah, they've been <laughs> doing like so they've been up. doing this like Jeremy Henry plotline slow burn where where we're like, we know it's coming. Why don't you just do it? Already? He's like this. And then she comes up and does like this, and he's like, I, "I was just trying to fist bump you because I'm about to like tell you to screw off." <laughs> hey, Jackie B. No powers for you. I'm gonna do this myself. You failure. Yeah. yeah it was a really, <laughs> it was a really cool teleportation effect, though. I gotta say that looked pretty bomb. It was the most interesting thing he's done the entire time he's been here. I mean, it's like he does that and then like it pans to where he is and he's like three feet to the right. right? He's like, I need I to moved. get my powers I back. Uh, um, but yeah, so I, I think Jackie, I think your your analysis is probably spot on. But like, it really was as simple as she's just scared that yeah. the, a monster could hurt her. Like, but she's I think mortal though, again. when she looked into the water and saw that. She recognize. I feel like she recognized that symbol, and I feel like the hidden one doesn't know that they have those little like bronze amulets. Yeah. Oh, she absolutely yeah. recognized it, and that's what feet would fed my belief that it it's the 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 brother, the light yeah. god, the upstairs guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know what his name is. My brother who lives in the upstairs bonus room. He got the cool room, and I have to be in the catacombs. He's got his own entrance and bathroom, Sucks, mom. Man. It's like the god. Gryffindors living up in the tower, and then and the, the Slytherins, Slytherins are in, in the, the basement. Dungeons. Yeah. Mom, I'm gonna have Pandora over whenever I want. Okay. <laughs> god. I know she's mortal, but God, would you just leave us alone? I'm telling you, I. I love her, okay? I only she, beat her twice a day. She brought me a flower at one time. It was really nice. I gave her some of my powers. It's cool. We don't see flowers in the basement very often. <laughs> and, <laughs> and with all of that, I think it's time before we get into predictions and all that. Can we, can, before we do Sleeping Abbey, can we do Hauling Abbey and just instead of British accents, do Holly? No. God. Like, Why? imagine Holly commenting on this episode. He's, we killed he him. Wouldn't have a, he wouldn't have a good comment about this episode, because it would all be about, like, that scene could be better if it was me shirtless. This makes it so much better. Can we please do Holly to Abby? <laughs> Holly can come if you want to bring him. But we're going can to, come we're to the going, British party. We're going to Sleepington Abbey. This week on Sleepington Abbey. The gang goes into the woods for a training mission. Joe faces his inner monsters, both real and fake. And, uh, and will Abby be getting together with Reynolds? Or her destiny? We find out on Sleeping to Abby. I heard that Stephen Lemieux was bringing a most terrible party guest <laughs> to Sleeping to Abby. It was most scandalous. Most scandalous indeed. Pretty crazy. Well, I heard that the Mr. Holly came to the party and said merely but two words. What were they? 
Pretty crazy. Oh, most scandalous. Most scandalous, most scandalous indeed. indeed. Pretty crazy. I heard that Miss Abby was caught in the woods running about with worms, <laughs> scooting her butt across the ground. You're you know, scandalous. you know that that's actually pretty funny because you know there was a time I had worms and I had to go to Tibet and find some monks and they gave me some some paste to rub rub down there and I got rid of them. What a distasteful creature. Most scandalous. Most scandalous. Those worms are me. Everything, everything about you. And that has been <laughs> sleeping to Abby. You know, I don't know why Joe Joe doesn't want me no, to win. No, that has been sleeping to Abby. I, I, I really, I really, I, I like to overstay my welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Yeah. Touche. Touche. Oh man. Um, all right. So uh, I'll do some. Uh, I'm list, I'm pulling up the uh, the iTunes reviews now. We'll do that after predictions. So why don't we hit predictions before we get out of here? I'd hit predictions. Mm. Now, you're after Buzz TV. All right, I don't think oh, pa- I don't think Pandora's becoming good. I don't think she is. I don't think. Well, I think the only thing that would make her team up with them is for her creating her own plan behind the hidden one's back to try to prove herself to the hidden one. She's gonna betray them. The so only you reason think it's, you think it's a tease. Yeah, the only no, she's gonna team up with them, mm-hmm. but she's gonna betray them. I think her whole idea is to get the box of Pandora that she knows she ha- they have from them, and to perhaps turn Holly or not Holly, turn Joe back into a Wendigo. Because she has control of dark things, and if she has more of the box, she might have be able to control Joe and turn him against them. But I think it's all a front. But I think it might backfire when the Hidden One finds her and doesn't know that she's doing this behind his back. And perhaps he might hurt her thinking that she betrayed him. I do think by the end of the season, she winds up fighting alongside yeah, our so team. Too. Whether or not they are set on the same goals and or whether we consider her good or yeah. not, quote-unquote... I think that she is going to fight with us against the hidden one. But here's here's the situation I'll throw at you guys, and I'll make it quick. So she wants her powers back, and she wants to prove herself to the hidden one. So she goes behind his back to team up with them to get some of her powers back through the box, right? He actively goes against them because he wants to just kill the witnesses and do whatever, right? So when he goes against them and she's working with them, he says something or does something that takes away all of her powers that basically banishes her from his side because he thinks that she's working against him and thinks she has been all along because it's the only explanation he can come up with for her failing so many times and completely banishes him from his mind which causes her to finally turn against him. All right. See it. I I mean, it definitely looks like the hidden one is doing something next episode, which is exciting. I mean... Because he's, right now, he's, out of all of these different, like, plot threads we have, we have, like, an it could be pro- plot thread, which, of course, I love. I love this, like, whole witness mythology. I love them as a team. I love yeah, them as I a romantical it. couple. Yeah. I, I, romantical. Uh, I love, I love yeah. all those things that are happening. I love that we have, we have this possible dad plot line. I love that we have this possible plot line with Freckles' parents. I love the Wendigo Joe. It's like the hidden one is the least of my concerns right now. They're putting in a lot of threads right now. There are so many plot lines moving at like sort of a, a slow oh, pace right yeah. now. I, I expect that they are all going to tie together in one specific way when we get to the end of the season. I think we're going to get Sophie's parents is going to be directly related to the witness storyline or Ichabod getting frozen. Like maybe they were his keepers or something like that. Um, I, I do think that those that it's all going to come together in the in this season finale um, in some big way. You know, they had, for American Horror Story Season 2, which was The Asylum, I believe, mm-hmm. had, My so, least many, favorite season had so many plot lines, and like three episodes from the end of the season, I was like, man, they could really tie these together really well and have a really satisfying finale. And all of my hopes and dreams were completely dashed to shreds when I watched the finale and it tied up one plot line and just left the other ones without any closure at all and didn't do anything. So... If Sleepy Hollow doesn't let me down, I would love that. I'm just hoping for at least one plot line to be finished. Yeah, um, there's going to be... I mean, look, Sleepy Hollow has not been renewed. I, it, there's no news on whether Fox is signing. I think it's probably going to come down to pilot season and what they all, what else they would have in their lineup um, for the year because the ratings are not like anything amazing. 
Um, but they've got four episodes left to really like bring it home and pr- and show us as fans and the the network why this show deserves more time. Um, so I would I'm hoping that they bring it, and I think that they're gonna there's gonna be some cool plot twists and some interesting stuff. I'm excited to see what happens with Joe as he reconciles the Wendigo side of him and what happens between him and Jenny as that goes forward. I'm excited to see Reynolds what Reynolds' truth is. Um, and with that, I think uh, real quick, I'm gonna say thank you to uh, Lana Vase, who is uh, who's review who wrote us a review one two three Sophie Crane and Abby getting down with the three P. Um, three player. You gonna read the whole thing or no? Um, well, we, oh, we, we, we unfortunately they we got our... Sophie and Ikabi. That's cute. So they, they're, so a, they're a cute girl power team. We had a review from yeah. Bad Wolf Bay Ten said Devil went down to Jersey, as well. That said Nevin Swan Song as he told Joe that Papa Corbin was clean and was not involved in any of Nevin's business, so Joe probably felt okay to spend the money. Right. So, yeah, thank you, yeah. Lana Base, every week. All million dollars. Yeah. Always. Week. And if you guys are watching on YouTube, please hit that thumbs up button. Yeah. Helps us out a lot. Leave a comment after this live stream's ended so we can actually read your comment and reply. Yeah, please uh, go re- uh, comment below. Comment on iTunes, all the places. Hit, hit, hit us with a rating, and we will be sure to shout you out next week on the show. Um, so until then, uh, we'll be back next week talking about Sleepy Hollow. So, Stephen Lemieux, where can everyone keep up with you? Hey, guys, you can find me on Twitter at Stephen Lemieux, S-T-P-H-E-N-L-E-M-I-E-U-X. Also, check out uh, the movie network that I produce for is uh, the Popcorn Talk Network, youtube.com slash popcorn talk network, and on Twitter at the popcorn talk. I'm about to go straight from this into Box Office Breakdown, uh, which tapes every week, and, yeah, just watch that, too. Um, you can find my Twitter, Instagram, blog on my website, 123jackieb.com, and my name is spelled J A C. Q-U-E. Q-U-E. Yes. Okay. Um, you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson, T-H-A-T-Z-A-C-H-W-I-L-S-O-N, also on YouTube now. Um, and also a bunch of shows here at Afterlands, including Grimm, which we're talking about the 100th episode tonight, Woo! immediately after this, with the writer Jeff Miller joining us in studio to talk about the episode. It's going to be so much fun. I hope to see you guys there. So until next week, guys, I'm Zach Wilson. Thanks for geeking out with us. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Good Good night, sleepyheads. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 